we are really thrilled to have uh, here with us tonight Carmen Rojas from uh, the Workers Lab, in, based in Oakland, but uh, nationally in the US. And this is the first labor-sponsored innovation lab in the United States and, and in North America writ large. They're taking this notion of building worker power at scale with independent revenue streams, sort of the best of what 20th century unionism has been and continues to be through the collective bargaining process, and saying, what else can we do in this day and age using things like technology, using new forms of capital to build power for workers and the kind of economy that is equitable, sustainable, build solidarity. Okay, so elephant in the room, yeah. Donald Trump. <laughs> Start off elephant? sort of, yeah. <laughs> um, What are the implications for organizing workers in this new context? Oh, yeah. Uh, we have a history in the United States where when we have conservatives in office, uh, they often use the tax status of nonprofits to attack them um, to say that they are labor unions and essentially atrophy their ability to actually engage in their organizing work at the state level or in the economy. Um, so th we are entering a really dark, dark time for working people. Um, that said, we elected Donald Trump in the same year that we passed minimum wage, over $12 an hour in more cities and states across the country. That's not accidental, that's the work of organizing. Can you give us a few examples of, of some of the projects that you've worked on? And one of the organizations that we uh, gave money to was an organization called Coworker.org. And this is where the technology piece comes in. Coworker.org is an online petitioning platform where workers who don't traditionally see each other can collect their voices to try to impact their conditions in the workplace. Um, their biggest, their claim to fame is that they have 25,000 Starbucks baristas who have used the platform to try to put pressure on Starbucks to change policies on wages and scheduling. But some of these vehicles, like cooperatives, are vehicles that have existed for a long time in lots of different places. Why, why are they so important to, yeah. I guess, reimagining um, uh, what's possible? Yeah. Because they're core to redistributing wealth. So one of the projects that we're working on in California is the conversion of two farms, uh, the 20th largest grape company in the world, into a worker-owned labor cooperative. 7,000 workers would be the largest cooperative in the country. Being able to access equity in that company, I've, my experience has been could trans, radically transform your economic reality. The election period um, instigated such a conversation about class and inequality in the U.S. You know, how do you build a workers' movement that is inclusive, um, can build bridges whilst obviously not embracing some of the ug uglier yeah. things that we've, we've seen unfold over the past few months? Yeah. I like to remind people that in the United States context, black and Latino people earn less, have less wealth than anybody else, and they disproportionately voted Democrat. Um, and I think that one of the challenges that we face um, as a movement and as a, as a country is a, re, like a reorientation towards shared fate, right? Um, we, as a country, need to start to build a labor movement, a working, people, working people's movement that most reflects those people um, and that isn't disconnected uh, and can articulate sort of their dreams and desires.